Okay, I'm back. Everything you need to know about coding rounds in big tech companies. I know it's a bit spicy title. Uh, many software engineers at some point in their career have dreaded these coding rounds. Believe it or not, the, uh, there is a lot of misunderstanding and fuss when it comes to these coding rounds. And many tech companies, big tech companies especially, they use these coding rounds to eliminate candidates at early stages, which can be a bit discouraging for a lot of people. A lot of people think that these are very hard, but uh, like anything, you can master these coding rounds in a few weeks time if you just allocate and practice enough. So why are these big tech companies still conducting coding rounds? I mean, you've been a web developer for 10 plus years. You know everything when it comes to JavaScript, it's different frameworks, databases, and everything. So they should be asking questions based on your expertise, right? Or at least that's what a lot of people think. But the answer might not be that simple. So through these coding rounds, these companies are assessing your ability to write clean, efficient, and maintainable code, which is going to be the core part of your job anyway. So if the interviewer asks questions related to your domain only, it, be it becomes difficult for him because the IT industry is constantly evolving. And for example, they can ask you a question related to NoSQL databases, whereas you've never worked with uh, NoSQL databases and you've always worked with relational databases. So it would be pretty unfair to judge your competence based on those questions right that's why big tech companies they came up with these coding rounds so that uh, no matter what problem solving will always be an integral part of general software engineering and then they can always assess your competence based on these rounds and the next thing that they are testing is your communication skill and your ability to work under pressure for example when you are solving a problem you're driving the conversation you are articulating the problem you are asking follow-up questions you're working under pressure this gives a lot of information about you to the interviewer which is very easy to test also these coding rounds give an opportunity to assess your ability to work under pressure and your communication skills for example when you're given a problem you need to reason with the interviewer about this problem you need to ask follow-up questions you need to give feedback you need to articulate all the assumptions that you are making about this problem you, it it needs to feel like a teamwork so they really test your communication skills and your problem solving skills and then these big tech companies they have higher standards and then they're gonna only hire best among the best and one secret to be the best is to be consistent and prepare for the rounds because most of the people will just call it quits in the first week or so so if you've been consistent and if you've prepared for these coding rounds, chances are you can make it to these big tech companies for sure. So your journey to prepare for these coding rounds will be very much similar to this graph, filled with self-doubt and criticism in the beginning, but then one day you pass all of your test cases and all of a sudden the world isn't a bad place anymore. You are proud of yourself and your crush might even reply you, who knows? Although that's a bit too much far-fetched. It takes time and practice to improve your data structures and algorithms, so you gotta be consistent. Well, it's daytime now. The first step is, your recruiter is your best friend. Well, it might be a bit exaggerated, there is definitely some truth to it. Your recruiter is not working against you, but with you. They definitely want you to pass all those coding rounds, buy that dream lake house, and then eventually find about different types of coffees in your dream company. I would strongly suggest finding a timeline that works best for you but normally people take around four to five weeks to prepare for these coding rounds and you can always discuss it with your recruiter if you have questions about what type of interview it is the expectations and if you need any helpful materials feel free to ask these questions to your recruiter they will definitely help you out you can always request your recruiter to arrange an internal call with some employee who's also working in the similar role so that you can get better insights about your upcoming role and in many cases recruiters will also arrange a mock interview for you that won't be marked in your hiring process but will just be there for you to understand where you stand in your interview preparation all right let's get to an actual interview round shall we so you're feeling nervous there are butterflies in your stomach the only thing that comes to your brain is a hash map if you ever get stuck just throw a hash map at the problem. Throw a hash map at the problem. Hash map, hash map. Well, my friend, it's not love. It's a coding round. You've done all of your preparation and nothing can stand in your way now. All right, so the interviewer is here and the Hunger Games begin. Usually the interview lasts for 45 minutes, except for the time when there is introduction between the interviewer and you. Usually people ask one question with, a, with some follow-up questions or they can ask you one easy question and then one medium to hard question. It depends on the interviewer. Sometimes the interviewers will ask you one easy question that can be solved in the first 10 minutes. 
uh, just to make you comfortable use your time wisely you need to showcase your communication problem solving and testing skills in this limited time let's take a coding question and dissect it piece by piece just a disclaimer i'm not using a real coding interview question but it's just to showcase the real time interview scenario so the question is read a file and then calculate frequencies of all the words in it well that is not a hard question is it not really but all of a sudden you've blacked out you're thinking about all of the different data structures and algorithms dp hash map dfs pfs you're missing your mom oh my god okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's the procedure everyone what's the procedure, stay what's the procedure? Stay and you, uh, while you're going through this emotional roller coaster, I can suggest you a few steps that will buy you some time and will also help you building your approach towards your solution. So the first step that you can do is to restate the question to confirm that you understand the problem statement correctly. Your interviewer is not going to spoon feed you the whole question. It's not a lead code question anyway. They are going to give you some very fuzzy statement and then you're going to you're going to have to ask follow up questions to build your understanding. For example, this interview question, it seems very easy, but the interviewer can make it as complex as he wants. It's also an art to write to ask the right questions because that tells a lot about the candidate. For example, some of the sample questions that you can ask in this question is what type of file is it? Is it a JSON, CSV or a text file? Do not assume that it's a text file because asking questions and clearly stating your assumptions can definitely help you as long as you clearly state them. So it is always advised to ask clarifying questions and not make assumptions in your own brain without clearly stating them out loud. Second question you might ask is how the data is structured in this file. For example, is it structured, unstructured, and can you read it line by line? Without asking clarifying questions, if you just jump up into coding, this can lead to bad feedback. For example, you just assume that it was a text file when in reality it was a 30 GB file. Uh, not so small and it was just one big line without any new lines and now your memory is on fire You must take into account memory limitations when you are working with files before work before starting to code Ask about the size of the file and if it can fit in the memory or not If the file is too large you can always read it line by line or in Python for example You can use generators this will give an idea to the interviewer that you clearly think about uh, critical edge cases and you uh, you have a clear understanding about memory management. So the next thing I would always confirm is what's the output format. For example, in our question, how's the output? Am I writing to a REST API or am I writing to a file or is it just a dictionary that I'm outputting? Because it's easier to assume that we need to return a dictionary in this question, but it's always best to clarify it with your interviewer first. For example, you need to find an item in an array and now it's not clear what's the output look like is it a boolean or the index of the element yeah so always clarify with your interviewer so the next tip is also from clarification section is that is to check the bounds of your input and output you always need to make sure what's the input and output bound size for example you are given a list of integers and you need to find a number so you can always ask the clarification question that if the list is already sorted or not so here are some of the common bound questions that pretty much apply to a lot of input and output types for example does the input contain same or different data types are there any negative numbers in the list of integers are the numbers signed or unsigned are there any strings in the in in your array are there any unicode characters in this file i would highly suggest to write down these common input bound questions in a notepad so that you don't forget them during an interview and then you can always tweak them around as to your specific interview question so now that it's time to start coding the solution you can always start with some pseudo code uh, while you are trying to get your thoughts together before you actually start jumping into the code one tip is to always say your solution out loud because sometimes it happens that the candidates just start typing the code and then there is an awkward silence in between you need to communicate whatever you are thinking to your interviewer it should simulate a real world working environment where you will discuss your ideas and openly take suggestions from your peers just follow this made up rule always be chatty okay even though you don't need to code it but you need to mention the brute force solution the time and space complexity it has and then you can start coding the optimized version of it uh, later on you can always state what data structures would even further optimize it if you are giving multiple solutions always discuss the time and space complexities that it will have what are the trade-offs 
based on your alternative solutions. For example, I can give you a scenario where you can discuss such time and space complexity trade-off. For example, in data storage, where if you are storing some data, uh, if you store it in decompressed form, it might take more storage, but it will be easier to retrieve. It will be faster to retrieve. But if you store it in compressed form, it will be slower to retrieve because of running the decompression algorithm. So you should always discuss it with your interviewer how you want the data to be stored. Another tip is that if the interviewer is giving you some tips and suggestions, take it. It is quite possible that you are going towards a different approach or gravitating towards a different solution than your interviewer wants. So they will give you some hints and you should try to implement those hints because it shows that you are open to taking suggestions as well. And then of course, always take it with a grain of salt, discuss it. And if it makes sense to both of you, then implement it. So now that you've discussed the approach and solution with your interviewer and he has given you a green light, start coding. You will most likely be typing on a Word document without any intelligence. So it's totally up to you to make in the formatting of the code and try to write cleaner code. You should use the language that you are most comfortable in and can implement basic data structures in it. It's very rare that the interviewer will ask you to implement a data structure, for example, a linked list from scratch. So most likely you will end up using the existing data structures that are already implemented in the language itself. Next tip is to write cleaner code and use as many helper functions as possible. For example, sometimes you have to implement a, a helper function that you don't have much clue about. So you can always write a function header and then comment that blah, 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 it does this, it returns this, and then use that function. Of course, you should always discuss these assumptions with your interviewer first. Using helper functions will help you write clean, modularized and maintainable code because it will be easier to debug and test and then the interviewer will be able to understand your whole thought process through the execution of different helper functions in it. Another important tip is to always use good variable names and add comments to your functions. For example, it's a very basic example but it's just to give you some basic idea. Here, you need to read the data from a CSV file, clean the data by removing punctuations, converting to lowercase, and remove any white spaces, and then calculate the total number of characters, words, and lines in, the, in this clean data. So if you don't write it with any helper functions or modularize it, it looks like this, like a whole one file of script. But if you write it in a modularized form, it's way cleaner, and then it helps to understand uh, your code uh, in entirety and helps to test different modular functions separately and that's what test cases are about now comes the hardest part you have written your code and now you need to find potential logical and runtime errors you should always try to come up with some test cases and run your tests on it it's a huge plus point when you write test cases to test your code because it shows accountability and leadership skills and then uh, when you're trying to find the errors by yourself it it's a huge plus point. So if you've managed to finish the coding problem before time, uh, the basic coding problem that you were given, there's a high chance that the interviewer will ask you some follow-up questions on that problem. And these questions vary, like these follow-up questions can either be the discussion of design patterns or actual implementation changes in your code. For example, using the example that I previously stated, the interviewer can ask you to read a second file that has stop words in it and you don't, and you need to filter out those words from your original input file and you don't need to uh, calculate the frequencies for it. This can further move on to calculating the frequencies of top five words or like um, ordering it into ascending or descending or whatnot. It depends on the interviewer. I'm just giving you some examples here. So the point is always expect follow-up questions and modularize your code in a way that it's easier to integrate further follow-up questions in it. Point is, while you're designing your solution, think about the scalability part of it as well. And that's it. Congratulations, you've made it. You've got the offer and your interview is impressed now so now your next task is to go through 20 hours of onboarding videos and understand all the legacy code that your ex-team member wrote so good luck so this is the end of the video i hope this was helpful the interview problem that i used wasn't necessarily an interview kind of problem but i just used it to make it simpler for understanding the different parts of it so all right cheers bye wait let's just give a shout out first to the sponsor of this video which is educative because a girl can really use some sponsors on her youtube channel i still remember the time when i was preparing for my coding rounds for big tech companies and the recruiter sent me a bunch of resources and uh Educative was part of those resources. So when I went through their courses for system design and coding preparation rounds, it was a perfect blend of text and images without me having to go through hours long of videos. 
so it's definitely helpful and they have a sale going on which will give you further discount so use the affiliate link that i have mentioned in the description and help a girl out please okay bye